Okay, so to talk about the muscles, we have to talk about the actions of the extraocular muscles. Extraocular muscles are muscles that uh, insert on the globe and move the globes about. They move the eyes about. And there are three uh, axes of rotation. So there is uh, a, a, a lateral uh, movement that either abducts the eye, takes it away from the midline, abducts the eye, look away, lead away, as the Latin would tell us, or adducts the eye, moves the eye towards the nose. That is a rotation about a vertical axis, right? So the eye is rotating this way. A second uh, uh, plane of, uh, of um, eye movement is elevation and depression. And that just is, if you imagine a axis that runs in this direction, it's moving the eye up, elevation, moving the eye down, depression. And finally, there are torsional movements. These are movements that are around an axis that is coming in and out of the eye. These are rotations that move the eye, intort the eye toward the top of the eye towards the nose, or in extort the top of the eye away from the nose. So intortion, extortion. So torsional movements. Those are the three uh, types of movements. We will we will concentrate our energies on uh, horizontal eye movements. Um, we'll talk a little bit about vertical eye movements and we'll mostly ignore torsional eye movements. Now, all vertical and torsional eye movements are conjugate. That means that if one eye, if the left eye, left eye is moving in one direction, the right eye is moving in the same direction. Now they may be called by different things. So for example, if the left eye extorts, the right eye will intort. If the left eye, um, but if the left eye elevates, the right eye is going to elevate. And if the left eye depresses, the right eye is going to, is to depress. You will never see people moving their eyes differently um, in, in the vertical or in the torsional planes. But in the horizontal plane, there can be what are called disconjugate movements. And the disconjugate movement that we are capable of is convergence or vergence. It's called either convergence or vergence. And when does that occur? It occurs when we change our fixation point from a far distant uh, target to a near target. So I'm looking away. I'm looking at mountains. I wish I was looking at mountains. I'm not looking at mountains. but. If I were to be looking at mountains, I'd be looking far, far away. And then I decide I want to read a map or I want to look at my hand and I go like this. And what you see is that my eyes that were facing this way, now they converge. They're looking in. That's convergence. And that's a disconjugate movement. The two eyes are doing two different things. They're both called adduction, but they are not moving in the same direction. So horizontal eye movements can either be conjugate, as when one looks to the left or to the right, and they can also be disconjugate, as when they, when you converge your eyes or verge your eyes. Um, elevation, uh, vertical eye movements and torsional eye movements are always conjugate. Okay, so one of the reasons that we're going to talk about horizontal eye movements principally is because the actions of the two extraocular muscles um, are very simple. The lateral rectus always takes the eye away from the nose. The medial rectus always takes the eye towards the nose. That is not the case with any of the other four extraocular muscles. They, their action depends on the starting position. So it's complicated. It's really complicated. Um, one way to, to look at this is, uh, is just a summary shown here. So this is the lateral rectus is going to abduct the eye. The medial rectus is going to adduct the eye. AB duct the eye. AD duct the eye. And then the um, superior rectus has a, uh, an action of uh, elevation, whereas the inferior rectus has an action of depression. The superior oblique and inferior oblique, they're, they're reversed from what you would expect, and, and we will touch upon that in a moment. This is their actions, but the important thing for you to remember, 
I would, I would work my way through this, but in the end, what you want to remember is in the following slide, which is that if you are to test eye movements, what you do is you ask somebody to fixate on your finger and you move your finger in a H. All right, so you're moving it, you're testing them uh, as they adduct their eye, and then from the adducted position, you're asking them to elevate it and depress it. And that tests the oblique muscles, whereas when you um, ad abduct the eye, that initially uses the lateral rectus, and from that abducted position, you can now test the superior rectus and the inferior rectus. That is, that's the take home message. Now, if you want to understand this, it is understandable, but you must turn off all electronic devices and go into a dark room and only look at uh, material that is going to help you ex understand this. This is explained uh, in my textbook and in, in many other textbooks, um, uh, there are many sites online where you can look at this. Uh, it, it all has to do with how the muscles insert and what their angle of, of um, pulling is. And what you can see is that the, the rectus muscles are very close to the optical axis, not, not quite, but very close to the optical axis, whereas the oblique muscles pull orthogonal to the, um, uh, to the rectus muscles. Uh, you can get away with not being able to, uh, to, to explain this from first principles. Uh, if you're interested in, in understanding it, uh, and it is incredibly interesting, uh, I would suggest taking some time to do that. Um, but for our purposes right now, the critical thing to remember is that testing for horizontal eye movements, easy. Lateral rectus, medial rectus, that's all you got all day long. To test for the superior and inferior rectus and oblique muscles, you've got to get the eye to a certain starting position where the action of either the rectus muscles or the oblique muscles is isolated. And to isolate the oblique muscle actions, you adduct the eye and to isolate the rectus muscle uh, actions, you abduct the eye. So in the next, um, and, and I will leave it at that. I, I encourage you to think about this, to, to work on it on your own. Um, I will turn myself into a pretzel if I attempt to, to take you through this, and, and, I, and it's certainly not a 10,000-foot um, a, a up uh, view of, of, what, uh, of medical neurobiology to explain the, the actions of the extraocular muscles. So we're going to leave it at that and go on to look at the consequences of um, damage to gaze control uh, um, par parts of the nervous system.